welcome everyone. Uh, I missed you. <laughs> uh, well, my name is Daniela Costa. I am the live events coordinator of the uh, audiovisual division of the American Translators Association. Um, today we have another exciting Instagram live uh, with Mona Shetty. She is from India, so she will tell us a lot about this amazing um, market and the localization um, industry in India. Hi. Hi! Hello, good morning, good afternoon for you, or good, good evening. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Mona? I'm good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Very well. Uh, well, I, I didn't say this, but I'm in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and Mona is so kind because she's in India, so the time difference is huge, like eight and a half hours. Uh, so here we are. Thank you for being here. Yeah, it's a great time for India. You'll see a lot of people joining in from India at the moment. I yes, yes, I'm seeing that. Yeah, oh. great. <laughs> Not a time in the morning. Okay. Okay, well, welcome everyone. It's so nice to see you. So, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what you do, uh, what's your specialization? So, actually, I've been a voice actor since I was uh, a child. Uh, my parents were both in advertising and uh, they um, introduced me to the world of voice acting very early. So, I started doing radio spots and TV commercials almost at the age of five, I think, because I have an award from the age of six so uh, wow. <laughs> I'm guessing I must have started a little before that so um, uh, I've been voiceovers for radio spots and TV commercials for the longest time all through school and college and uh, then um, uh, my mother was asked to uh, handle the dub for Jurassic Park in 93 uh, for the first time in Hindi and uh, she was, uh, before that, she was doing uh, some, some Hindi TV shows into Bengali. So India has a lot of languages. So, you, you know, even within it, there is also a lot of uh, dubbing and that goes on. So, um, so my mom was asked to do Jurassic Park. I was in college then. And I was just helping her out wherever I could, you know, with translation, with direction, with production. You know, all the little things that she needed to get. <laughs> I was helping her. So I would say I've, I've been there pretty much for the whole 30 year journey of the company that we've been running, uh, Sound and Vision India, which is now Sound and Vision Studios. And uh, since 93, we've been dubbing English movies into Hindi, into um, uh, our South languages, South Indian languages, Tamil and Telugu. Uh, these are the re three really big film markets, Hindi, Tamil and Telugu. These are the three really big film markets followed closely by Kannada and Malayalam. Mm. Uh, so yeah. the, the four South Indian languages are very, very strong in India. Mm -hmm. And um, we've been localizing um, across Indian languages. I mean, India has like, I think, 22 official languages and <laughs> probably 122 languages uh, and hundreds of dialects. But I think the official languages are 22. And uh, dubbing is hugely popular in at least six to ten languages. Like advertising does a minimum of ten languages. Um, TV, uh, easily more languages than that. Um, uh, films are uh, predominantly, I mean, there's a Bengali film industry, there's a Gujarati film industry, there's a Punjabi film industry. You know, we have independent states have independent film industries for their language because each language is completely different from the other. And culturally, they are slightly different. We are very diverse. Culturally, we are very diverse. Yes. In terms of language, we are very diverse. So, uh, so there's a lot of work happening in various languages. And uh, we have been at the heart of all of that growth. Since uh, 93, I've been helping my mother first with scripting, then with direction. Then I started directing on my own. And uh, after my mom passed away in 2012, I've been running the company. And we've expanded to other regions within India. So we have our own studios now doing all handling all languages. So, yeah, we're very excited with the, the, the current times. I mean, it's great for the... For anyone in the media and entertainment industry, I think, in India at the moment. 
Yes, that, that's unbelievable. I mean, this is this is all happens in just one country because yeah. we we can may talk about regions like Europe. Okay, you have many languages, or in Latin America we have different variants of Spanish. We normally translate it into one like neutral Spanish or something, and then you have Portuguese and of course English in the U.S. and Canada. But here in one country, like 22 languages, it must be quite a challenge. I mean, to find voice talents, translators, um, uh, reviewers, editors, uh, I know. <laughs> you are a country of a billion people. They're probably heading to <laughs> a and a half now. <laughs> so it's not difficult to find people for anything anymore. <laughs> well, okay, well, that, that's, that's great to hear. Yeah, because I, I, I imagine, I mean, the, the effort in, in producing yeah, like just I, one single I, movie or... Europe probably in you know in terms of the number of languages that are spoken and dubbed mm -hmm. wow 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 that's amazing and um what it what in your opinion is the content in the content more dubbed or subtitled what's the the trend do you know or well i i i'm going to make guesses because obviously i'm not on the distribution and bar mm -hmm. broadcasting side um i may, may not have accurate statistics but uh, the way I see it is that uh, when we started out, it was primarily dubbing because mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, uh, literacy used to be a little bit low. Uh, people mm -hmm. are not comfortable reading. Uh, uh, also, many of us, uh, we don't necessarily read regional languages, even though, it's, even though it may be our mother tongue. And um, it is also... Um, uh, so a lot of animation, a lot of children's programming, children don't read. So a lot of children's yeah. programming is uh, also um, uh, dubbed, of course. You know, it's never subtitled. So we used to do a lot of children's mm -hmm. programming, a lot of feature films. Uh, everything used to be dubbed. Off late, because obviously subtitles are much cheaper, much quicker. So yeah. off late, yeah. everything yeah. being subtitled. I think it's also being mandated by governments for things to be subtitled. Uh, so subtitling, audio description, access services, these things are growing a hell of a lot uh, because of the government mandates. Uh, but dubbing was always at the forefront of everything in terms of the viewing experience. Wow, that's amazing. And well, you started uh, at a very young age, as you told us. Um, and what was the, 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 the challenge of, or the, the, the most difficult challenge of dubbing, for example, from English into your native languages? Well, you know, um, uh, I think the challenge, first of all, was to understand the market because uh, um, everybody wanted to watch English movies, not necessarily everybody understood them. And to understand the challenges of the market, we were very, very reliant uh, on uh, marketing heads you know basically telling us these are the statistics we have we have this is what research is throwing up so for example when we started out dubbing uh, let's take hindi as an example we started with a very pure form of the language right because we thought that we had to hit the heartland of india we had to be very pure in our language we had to make sure that we had a richness of language and uh, we would dub everything including good morning good afternoon thank you salutations everything we would dub uh, translate and dub now uh, so many years later uh, we find that so you know that as we o over the years i think we learned that you know, every time you had to adapt to a different... Then there was a time when we tried to dub everything into English, you know, keep it more <laughs> uh, like the way we speak, you know, picture of languages. Um, so now we find that there is more of a mid-path. Uh, uh, we are going more colloquial. Uh, you are trying to retain the flavor, the original flavor of the character. You, you are trying to retain cultural differences, diversity within the program. Uh, the director's intent, of course, is most important. Uh, so all of those have started getting more prominence now than uh, just what marketing says. Um, research and data is, of course, very important because, you know, it gives us the way forward in terms of what people like mm -hmm. to consume and uh, what, what is easiest for consumption. But 
Um, there's also uh, the, na the original nature of the content and what you can do with it while you're localizing. So those are usually the challenges. I mean, whenever you do any kind of dubbing or a sub dubbing or yeah. localization. Uh, and I think it's pretty much the same in India. Yeah, it's, it's so exciting. Yes, I, I can imagine. Um, and I know you, I, I don't know if you can talk too much about your work because of confidentiality, because we always, uh, we are always bound by confidentiality. But I think, well, you're a huge star in India because <laughs> from what I've seen, uh, you're very famous. Um, and what about which are the, 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 the stars that, or the Hollywood stars you adapt into your, your native language? Can you tell us some names? Yeah. Just for fun. I, 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 <laughs> I, I've uh, done a lot of uh, work for, uh, I've dubbed a lot of Catherine Zeta-Jones. I've dubbed a lot of Kate Beckinsale, Angelina Jolie, um, Halle Berry, um, hmm. I've, I've uh, uh, Kate Winslet. Um, wow. uh, currently, I'm the voice of Jennifer Lopez. Um, I've uh, just dubbed a film called The Mother for Jennifer Lopez. And yes, uh, I know. Yes. Yeah, so, so there are uh, there are quite a few Hollywood actors uh, who I've uh, dubbed for, and um, oh, it's been. It's been great in terms of, you know, that is so much a part of the learning experience. The more variety of actors mm -hmm. dubbed for, I've dubbed for Salma Hayek, uh, a lot of the uh, Eva Mendes, a lot of the uh, Latin American. Latina. And, yeah. <laughs> I've dubbed for a lot of them because, you know, I think uh, maybe my voice quality kind of matched uh, mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yes, I've had a lot of opportunity to dub some great actors uh award-winning actors and, and in award-winning performances and it teaches you such a lot about acting about voice modulation about you know uh just learning how to perform uh yeah it's an experience yeah i'm well, also I, the I, voice I... Of in the marvel films <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> wow. so the latest it's incredible yeah yeah uh, it's Amazing, totally amazing. And I, I think the, um, I mean, the preparation, it's not, the, I mean, the, there's such a wide range of, I mean, styles, talent, the way they speak, because I, I, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, you, I lost you, from you are, uh, voice talent is selected. Oh, I think it's, I, I lost you. Are you here? Yes. Yes, I'm here. here. Yeah. <laughs> I yes, I can hear. Sorry, I was saying that um, there is a wide range of, uh, I mean, styles and the way they speak, and maybe you 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 have to work on that um, very closely. I mean, to to uh, find the, I mean, gestures or because everything is um, conveyed in in the voice uh, when when you work with uh, in dubbing, and also I, if I'm not mistaken, the same. Actress or actor are chosen every time they have to dub yes. um, By and large, someone. Established voice for a particular actor, then mm -hmm. you will be called back uh, to dub for that actor if it's a if it's a regular part in their natural voice. But if it is uh, something where they are doing something very different in terms of a characterization, uh, you know, like mm -hmm. playing a different or playing different, uh, using a different kind of voice texture. Sometimes due to, uh, due to the creative requirement, uh, sometimes the voices are changed. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and about streaming, I think streaming came to change everything. I mean, change everything in the world because Since I don't know what happened. In changed. Yes, everything changed. Changed. That's right. And what was the, the situation in India? Do you have any uh, particular streaming services specific for India or do you work with the big ones like we have Netflix, Amazon? I have uh, odd uh, 25 plus Indian streaming services besides uh, national ones that are already here. There are so mm -hmm. many Indian services uh, that are doing equally well that to a lot of uh, uh, Hindi uh, and regional audiences, regional material, uh, which also I think the regular, the big streamers are also 
um, uh, going in that direction because you know everybody is uh, i think loving the india story and the india growth story especially uh, with the m&e industry the rate it's been it's been growing at something percent year on year uh, our entire media and entertainment industry and uh, content is a huge part of that uh, so i'm guessing that you know the 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 average growth is at least 10 to 20% a year um mm-hmm. so uh, earlier it was the big thing was television you know and even today probably the highest penetration is uh, uh, through television uh but you know we're a huge film loving population um, i know i know only to religion in india <laughs> so, <laughs> yes I- I I I had the chance uh, through my work because I I wasn't very familiar with well I knew the term bollywood of course but you if the if the actors or actresses didn't come to the to the, to the mainstream as we call it I mean hollywood or something um you know nothing about I mean maybe if you are too interested or too invested in in film if you are a critic or whatever but for us for the common people it's, uh it's not from we are not familiar with indian content and now through streaming it's amazing because you have access i mean i i i could have access through my work and i was amazed and now i'm a, a huge fan <laughs> i must say i'm a huge fan i i know nothing because it's it's so i mean the the market's so huge like you have like different um uh, i don't know areas or, or well as you said the film is developed in each independent state so each state will have their own stars their own festivals yeah. and it's you, unbelievable yes yeah. you know we are we're at a beautiful time now like as you know that you know two indian films won one of oscars this year mm. so not only is india really being noticed uh, around the world uh, yes. because of you know uh, are the f- very first uh, uh, show that we dubbed in english a uh, indian show that we dubbed in english was sacred games and it did so well worldwide that uh, everybody it really put india on the map in a sense mm-hmm. uh people wanting to watch indian content on streaming services and more and more indian content is now being dubbed into english for the global audience so mm-hmm. in that sense you know really 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 grown uh the market and the and the focus on india has really grown and i think that focus is pretty much here to stay for a long time um similarly within the country you know all these various film industries which were pretty much functioning independently and exclusively of each other uh because of streaming now you know and because we were all sitting at home for a couple of years uh we've all been consuming more and more regional cinema because it's all been localized and you can either watch it with subtitles or you can watch a dubbed version and everybody has even indians have started uh consuming much more content from other regions regions other than their own other wow. states mm. therefore you know, it's punjabi cinema whether it's bengali cinema whether it's gujarati cinema um of course tamil cinema and telugu cinema has really uh shot through malayalam cinema has become extremely famous uh we recently had uh, some kannada films like kgf and kantara which which uh, did amazing amazing business so um now we are finding more and more actors traversing uh various languages and working in uh films from other regions than their own and uh, mm-hmm. more and more films being made multilingual so it's a great time in terms of the confluence of cultures the confluence of languages that's happening within india and also the way indian content is being noticed outside of india yes yes uh, um i i had the chance to tra- to translate I, yeah i had the chance to translate um some movies and documentaries uh, indian uh, content into uh, latin american spanish from english of course because uh, everything is translated first into english and then localized into other uh, languages so that's my next question what are the challenges because you said there are so many languages and now there's like a crossover <laughs> between states and regions um how 
do you manage those localization projects? I mean, even for that, because everything starts with translation, I assume. Yes. So, so uh, through various layers, it would start with translation, then it would go into adaptation. Yeah. Then you find out what, what should and shouldn't be localized. Uh, where you want to retain the original flavor and want to localize to bring in uh, um, a more regional flavor. Um, then also, in, you know, it goes through rounds of QC and uh, feedback from clients, from uh, language supervisors, mm -hmm. who will then tell you, oh, this, uh, this is an enjoyable viewing experience versus, no, this is not. Because, you know, sometimes we get a mandate that says, all foreign language should be kept in kept uh, in the original or uh, any language other than the language of the film should be kept in original now does the audience want to read a subtitle in the middle of a dubbed version uh, these are all learnings now new learnings that we're we're getting gradually uh, from our clients and uh, we're seeing more and more that you know every uh, every title every kind of content has to be dealt with differently it has to be dealt with uh, with a clear focus on uh, what is the what is the aim of that content what is it conveying is it fact based is it fiction uh, what is the genre what is the kind of audience you're looking at um, what would that uh, what could be distracting for the audience what could be exciting for that audience there's uh, not only is it there's a lot of data and statistics, but it's a huge guessing game. What's right and what's wrong? Uh, you got to go with your gut. Yeah. You got with the you know who whether the client has been able to convince you to go a particular route or whether you've been able to convince the client that you should go a particular route. It's just everything is up in the air. We're just trying to do our best to make it the most watchable, most most enjoyable experience for the viewer. Really, so there are many many yeah. challenges. You know, the cultural diversity, as beautiful as it may be, poses its own challenges. And uh, <laughs> and then uh, yes. the casting, uh, uh, not not every region will, you will find the same similar kind of casting. So you have to cast very specific to region as well. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. nominal can be uh, very different. Uh, names, phrases can be very different. Idiomatic translations. Uh, can be very mm -hmm. di different languages. So these are the common challenges, uh, which I don't think ever go away from the localization industry. You, you, they just evolve year on year. Uh, how you deal with them, those those situations evolve. But I don't think the challenges change really. No, <laughs> really. <laughs> I mean, uh, I I'm stressed just by hearing you because you have to make so many decisions in the process for just one movie or one series or uh, I mean or one documentary because what I see in, in the templates when I, when I translate subtitles is that you have like three or four languages maybe in just yeah. one movie so I say oh and sometimes there are notes like less for verification or, or because you everything is a working process even in subtitling so I can imagine how hard it is to 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 organize a team uh, to form a team and say, no, okay, no, well, no, uh, who will review? The hard thing is not organizing the team. What's, what's tough is that you have to maintain consistency across all your languages yes. while you're paying attention to the specific needs of each language. So, you know, you yes. on the one hand, you want consistency, but on the other hand, you have to be very mindful of the specific needs of each language and their mm -hmm. audiences. That is really, I think, the the balancing act that we have to do yes yes it's it's huge <laughs> i can't imagine how you do it uh, because it's it's absolutely uh, unbelievable really um and um what about uh have, well we said we talked about the the, the internal internationalization of um indian content because now it reaches the, the whole world through streaming have you noticed any any difference in, in the way um, products are uh, or individual products are developed, or has it changed, or have you kept your essence? And I'm all? seeing huge differences, and the huge differences are also across audiences, across clients. We're seeing different uh, approaches. You know, there are the more we're doing internationalization, 
sometimes uh, some some sometimes clients are very clear that this is for a western audience and therefore uh should uh should follow well i always get asked can we please drop this in neutral english and i i personally don't know what neutral english is i think it's either your english or my english there's no neutral yeah. i think what we really um working towards uh, is maybe not a neutral english but something that's clean and clear and can be understood by anyone really and whichever mm-hmm. accent it be uh, so i think there are sometimes that you know people feel that oh people don't understand a certain accent so we should have a uk accent or we should have a us accent so that people understand better mm-hmm. uh but we feel that you know because we dub a lot of indian content with indian characters uh in indian accents i think what's good for us is just to make sure that it's clean and clear and understandable and not so thick mm-hmm. and that uh, global audiences cannot understand uh while we that we try to re- retain a lot of look uh, sometimes the salutations the way you would address your mother or your father or your uncle or your aunt or your brother or your- the salutations are important the greetings are important some phrases are important the abuses are important um, mm-hmm. you know every everything that can add, add some color some you know local flavor some variation i think that adds a little bit of spice to the whole thing and makes it fun for the consumer in terms of okay i am watching indian content uh dubbed by yes. indian actors, so I'm enjoying the best of both worlds. I have it in English, but I have a lot of Indian flavor to it. Yes, that's amazing. Uh, this is, I mean, this is a personal question for me. Um, I see that many times you say uncle and aunt to the elderly. I mean, yes. if I'm not mistaken, that has nothing to do with a relationship, a family relationship or anything. Is that right? Yes. because it it's a, a very specific question for localization into other languages it's kind of confusing for some languages yes. especially for spanish where we have a word for that so yes so we this uh, this comes from uh, the uh, uh, the culture we have of respect uh, where yes. you respect uh, you address anyone older than you with a lot of respect and therefore you would uh, uh if you for example if you were older than me maybe i'd call you sister or i'd call you ma'am uh so these are those kind of salutations or i or if you were my friend's mother i might say auntie uh you know uh, um uh, so uh, we don't directly address people uh by their first name we always add some kind of a salutation basis uh is this person um older than me younger than me uh you know what 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 age what category my friend my friend's mother my friend's aunt um all of those kind of things come into play and uh, you know we have a uh culture of all indians are my brothers and sisters and therefore <laughs> everybody's mums and dads become our aunts and uncles so <coughs> so yeah that, that is the indian culture where you address uh your your uh elders as either aunt or uncle or uh, if somebody's just a little bit older than you you say brother or sister out of respect and we have specific yes, that, that's like instances mm-hmm. yes as i was thinking when you said well we keep our uh, uh, i mean the essence of of yeah, i mean in the um, when you localize and okay you translate into english but you, you leave some of the cultural aspects of india because you are watching indian content and it came to my mind because it always i, I found it confusing at the first time because i said wait this character is, has nothing to do i mean he's not part of his family or whatever and then i did some more research and learned the, about this but it's so interesting to i mean to share this with with anyone here because um I think it's it's good for for us who maybe yeah. are not familiar with with the way you you speak yes yes even in india now that now that people are becoming more and more modern you will actually have some sometimes your friends parents saying please don't call me uncle or auntie mm. <laughs> they want to be addressed either by their first name or they want to be addressed as uh, you know mr so and so mrs so and so or or uh, you know 
uh, or brother or sister. They don't want to be called uncle and auntie. They don't, they don't want to be reminded of their age. Yeah. Uh, so yes. that is new <laughs> age <Indian> now. <laughs> well, everything changes. And, and of course, we have to adapt to, to new times and, and, and so on. But at the same time, uh, we have to be uh, very aware of, I mean, the, this question of the cultural differences, I find it amazing, especially when we are localizing not Hollywood films, because we are very, I mean, uh, uh, the United States is everywhere, and we've been so, um, I don't want, want to use the word invaded, but we are so overwhelmed with American content. We see it everywhere on social uh, media, on, on, on the news. So it, we are more or less familiar with that, but these new markets, let's say, like Korean, Indian, um, Chinese, uh, everything we, we are seeing, um, oh, well, the, the Nordic uh, series, uh, we have to get into the, the, the culture. We have to do so much research when, when we work on, on, on this content just to deliver a, a high quality work or at least something decent <laughs> in a way because we are not working from, from the original language. And what happens when you create the templates? Um, because, uh, I mean, you, you must create a dubbing script templates into English and also uh, subtitling templates into English. Um, what's the approach? Do you leave many notes? Um, yeah. Because it's a challenge when you have many languages. And what happens? Um, for us, for for the the other end of the of the process, who, as we, who are at the other end of the process, who want to who have to translate this um, the scripts or these templates? How how do you approach the? It is easier for people like you by adding as much annotation as we can in terms of uh, <laughs> language spoken, cultural context. Um, uh, you know, uh, reference what, where, what, what is this, what is this joke or what is this dialogue referencing? Um, mm -hmm. So we have, uh, you know, like if it's specific to a cricket reference or a cricketer who is very famous, or a celebrity who is very famous in India, then you give those references and those those um, uh, annotations in the script when we are putting it in English for the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So when Creating an English language script for the rest of the world to use, we put in all those annotations to give as much uh, cultural context, as much uh, uh, clarity of understanding as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, about uh, going back to streaming services, how many languages do you have available? Do you know how many Indian languages? Because the other ones. Are you definitely have uh, at least 10, if not 15, at least 10. Ooh. Yeah, mm -hmm. because uh, you would have uh, Hindi, uh, Bengali, Gujarati, uh, Punjabi, Oriya, Assamese, um, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam. Th those 10 are uh, have been around forever, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, other than that, there are a lot of uh, other uh, state languages coming up, uh, which are being used more and more for streaming. So um, the smaller streamers would definitely have content in other languages as well, or dialects sometimes. But that, I mean, that, that would be limited in terms of uh, numbers and reach. Uh, but I'm sure it exists. Yes, and and do all studios uh, deal with? all of those 10 languages or I mean that yeah. studios or do you specialize in some other languages no, more than others? We try to cover as much as possible. Whatever comes our way, we try to put together a te team and, you know, get the job done. Uh, and how much does it, uh, how long does it take you to, to localize a, a movie into 10 languages? <laughs> oh my God. Well, all the languages happen simultaneously. For each of the regions, uh, so mm -hmm. uh, they would pretty much take the same amount of time. Uh, so uh, about two months from start to finish, two to three months, depending on how much time we're able to get from the client. Uh, because not always, because we deal with a lot of uh, pre-release material, a lot of originals. So sometimes um, uh, material doesn't come to us uh, in the final cuts are not ready. 
or the final picture is not ready mm-hmm. final sound is not ready mm-hmm. time so sometimes you have to do it within a month i mean we've mm-hmm. even done in a in a week or two, two weeks uh sometimes days, which is very stressful so anyway i know please don't look at those timelines <laughs> <laughs> but yes the ideal would be 3 months wow but it's uh, yes it's it's reasonable yeah, i mean 10 languages um and the dubbing process is much more complex than subtitling because subtitling is just well it's not just but you write the subtitles and then you you reproduce them uh, yeah. uh, and that's all and does for subtitling so you know it's mm-hmm. it's easy it's uh, one person translating one person adapting one person doing the tech check one person doing yeah. the qc and you, you know and you- it's It's, it's you're done. Yeah, you're done. Whereas here, mm-hmm. there's, there's, uh, there's all of this that goes into subtitling plus the cast, plus the director, plus you know your sound engineer, plus the mixer. Uh, there's got mm-hmm. to be mixing. So um, all of that brings a brings a a level of complexity uh, to the dubs that uh, needs a lot more time to be done. And dubbing also needs slightly finer nuances because you're looking at body language you're looking at lip sync you're looking at performance uh you you're, you're yes. trying to get as close to the original uh content as possible so uh, mm-hmm. the more time you give it the better better quality product you can get basically yes yeah. yes absolutely i agree with you yes and what about sdh do you work with sdh subtitles and accessibility or just having yes we've done some of that uh, uh, so uh, for those those who are listening to us and who don't know uh, what is sdh sorry the deaf and hard of hearing uh, so mm-hmm. it's, um, basically with with uh, all sound cues and everything so we yes we do try we do some of that uh, that has not been mandated here yet so uh, right now it's just plain subs mm-hmm. for the most part closed captions mm-hmm. and sd haven't been mandated i think in india yet because i'm not really seeing a huge demand for that there is a demand but not as big mm-hmm. as uh, regular tracking so for for example for indian content you won't have you will have subs but you won't have subs and cc and sdh and you won't have the whole mm-hmm. gamut mhm wow well maybe in, in the future because it, it's something i mean it's not new but it's Uh, everyone's beginning definitely to be catch- more aware of the need thing the need for it definitely mhm yes and it's a uh, uh, for me it's a working process because it's kind of challenging to to localize um accessible uh, accessible content so yes it's it's difficult um and um well we we talked about the the standards for the creation of english templates is there something different from working with indian languages than with any other languages any differences apart from the cultural nuances and so. the different languages no, we are or? we're working with korean content we are working with japanese anime you know uh mm. dramas the uh, japanese anime there's so much of chinese content uh there's so much of spanish uh you know the novellas come in um there's uh, french That's content fun. yeah there's french mm-hmm. coming in so there's content coming in from all over the world now so i think uh, the challenges are pretty much universal and uh, it everything boils down to the accuracy and the amount of context that you have in the in the uh, english script that comes to you yes yes and which is more difficult to localize uh, content uh, kids uh, content i mean or the ones for adults definitely has its challenges because you know you uh, children all over the world i think are busier than adults these days <laughs> <laughs> yes they have to worry about school they have to worry about uh, after school classes extracurricular activities sports music um exams uh vacation time they they the children are like the the hottest commodity around but uh, <laughs> no but i mean uh, and also you know it takes children much longer to dub so it's more difficult so it's definitely mm. more challenging 
interesting to work with the uh, children's content especially if your cast includes a lot of children it takes a lot more time and effort to get that done uh, yeah. a lot of children don't read scripts uh, very efficiently so you have to help them with their lines they need more time to understand time lip sync performance they can only give you an hour or two a day if at all yeah. sometimes some of them are only available on weekends sometimes they're av- available only um not available for a large stretch of time because they have exams so there's definitely a lot mm-hmm. of challenges uh, around working with children um but also also uh, similarly i think with elderly people uh, there's uh, there's a relatively smaller talent pool of senior citizens as we call them in india um, yes. so those uh, they are they are harder to find also oh Oh, well um yes um it's it's understandable because people maybe want to rest after <laughs> having worked all the all of their lives and of course children can't work for long hours it's completely understandable but it's that's why that's my question that's why my question because um uh, i imagine that localizing a, a kids movie takes longer because of the hours and also maybe because of the songs or the or, oh, yeah. i don't know songs also take the need to bring in professional lyrics that you know you got to make sure that uh the songs are not only meaningful and lyrical in your in the localized language but they also match the body language the lip sync the expressions of the original it's very tough and then you know mm-hmm. casting for things matching the original exactly uh it takes a lot of time uh but it's yes, very 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 satisfying i mean i've worked on yes, a lot of yes. songs and it's it's great fun it's great fun it's it's very yes i i fun localizing songs is perhaps the most difficult i know i know tell me about it because i i mean i know nothing that i i'm a terrible singer and i know nothing about music i just write subtitles for songs which is not the same as adapting a song but when i see what you do when you adapt a song for for dubbing or maybe we get the dub script to to adapt it to subtitling i say okay you are magicians uh, uh, it's amazing what you do i mean i think you are a singer yourself is it right are you a singer i am tra- <laughs> a confident singer so that's why I love, i love music recordings because i can sing in the background and i can enjoy my music <laughs> but yeah, i love uh, Uh, to be in music recordings uh, because i love music and i love to sing but i'm not a confident singer so i don't really sing professionally no and you know uh, i thought you 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 did, you did your singing for <laughs> like me <laughs> 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 yes but it's it's unbelievable i mean so much work behind what we see in a movie and are uh, dubbing actors and actresses famous in in india like yeah. they are for example in spain or they have become more and more famous uh, with the advent of social media because people have become more accessible through social media and there's more information going around right mm-hmm. earlier no one knew mm-hmm. you not get credits back in the day as well um so now because there's credits easily available online uh you know you're no longer having to wait for a tv show to come on or go to a movie theater to watch a movie everything is sitting there online uh you can pretty much see the credits whenever you want uh so people are getting to see uh the same names coming up over and over again they're seeing that some of the, some of these people are like uh you know uh crashing out amazing performances and uh some of the established voices are extremely famous they have their own fan pages now on instagram <laughs> on facebook and- have a fan following and it's great fun i mean anime voices right they 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 so famous yeah. so yeah yeah, yeah there is uh, more and more um awareness of the world of voicing the world of voice overs the world of voice acting uh there are more and more people wanting to learn uh this craft more and more people uh curious what it's all about uh how do you join how do you make it a career uh wanting to somehow you know uh be a part of it wow well that's amazing yes i, I was asking you this because um uh, a couple of weeks ago i went to to the cinema to the theater with with my daughter and some friends 
and we watched the Mario movie. And at the end, in the credits, you had the names of the voice actors, I mean, the dubbing actors, not just Chris Pratt yeah. or Anna Taylor-Joy. No, they weren't there. Just the, the Latin American cast that dubbed the movie in the main credits, not just at, at the very, very yeah. end. So I said, oh, my God, everything, something's changing because in the past it was unthinkable. I mean, it, so it was not there. Exactly, exactly. And even, even if it's there, sometimes it's there so much at the end that by the time everyone's left, mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. nobody... Tell me about it. <laughs> it, it happens. Well, only the, the ones who work in subtitling, like me, wait until the end to see, okay, who translated this? This, this is great. Who did this? Uh, because, yeah, it happens all the time. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, I mean, everything's changing, and I'm really glad that we are uh, getting um, uh, uh, acquainted with some other markets, especially the Indian market, because you have such a tradition in film. Yeah. It's amazing. Once you start reading and you start doing research, it goes back to the 1900s. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, the, uh, because we always think about Hollywood, Hollywood, but there are other markets and this one specifically is so colorful. So, I mean, I mean, the songs are wonderful. The dances are wonderful. And especially the stories, the stories are, Amazing. I, I've come across some amazing stories and so original and I, I love it. I'm a huge fan, really. <laughs> we, have, we have everything right from slice of life to larger than life. All of it. We cover <laughs> all of it. <laughs> yes, it's amazing. So I wanted to thank you once again for, for being here. It was a, a very, very nice chat. You were very kind to, to, to share some of your experience and your time with us. So thank you. Thank you so much for being much here. For inviting me it's been great talking to you you know every time I speak to somebody from another culture it's so uh, on the one hand it's so heartening to know that we're all connected uh, doing the same job yes. in exactly the same way facing the same challenges and uh, there's just so many I mean, our community is just growing day by day isn't it uh, number of yes. people connected with day by day all over the world and mm -hmm. um, it's so interesting who share the stories of our work, our day-to-day -day, uh, you know, challenges, all the the bouquets, the brick bats, the um, similar problems. And what are the solutions? You know, come up coming up with common solutions. It's 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 lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. I hope I see you next time, sometime in in the future for yes. another interview. India. <laughs> yes, I will. I definitely will sometime. I don't know when, but I will be there somebody, <laughs> someday. Okay. Take care. See you, Mona. Take Thank you. Bye-bye. It's okay. Let's see. Okay, here we are. Well, that was a really, really nice chat. We learned a lot about the Indian market, which is huge, huge, and we have many opportunities of localizing that content into our uh, own languages, our working languages. So thank you all for being there. It's a pleasure to, to be back uh, with this series of Instagram Lives. Remember we uh, to stay tuned in, in our account because we share many news from the industry. We will have a happy hour. You are all invited to, to join us next Saturday. I think, I can't remember the time. I think it's 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, if I'm not wrong, but check out our social media uh, and where we can discuss everything we are concerned about in this wonderful uh, area of work, which is audiovisual translation. So see you next time. Have a nice weekend. See you all. Bye-bye. Oh,